order changes in rural England. The shadow of the industrial town falls across the countryside. Today, the immemorial labors of plowing and sowing and reaping are performed by machines. The farmer is turning more and more to scientific methods of production, intensive cultivation of crops, and centralized systems of marketing. More and more, he is depending for his livelihood on market gardening, on cattle, on dairy produce foods whose value is practically doubled if they can be delivered to the consumer fresh. The English village used to be a small self-contained economic unit. All through historical times, the village had a strict social organization of its own, headed by the squire. Affairs outside the village were a mystery, and affairs inside were nobody else's business. But nowadays, things are different. The wider world starts breaking in everywhere. The village authority still lights the streets and repairs the footpaths, but in high matters of state, the county council steps in and imposes a single pattern on the whole countryside. Modern transport has done a great deal to enlarge the scope of village life. The last 10 years or so have seen the development of a countrywide system of buses. They cruise through the most isolated villages, carrying the young people off to work in the towns and the women to the shops or cinemas. Vans from the large town stores deliver right to the cottager's door and they bring goods from the remotest countries of the world. Mail from any part of England reaches the village post office within 24 hours. Outings and excursions by automobile often take the place of Sunday walks in the country lane. There's hardly a thatched cottage that hasn't got its radio, and old as well as new cottages are wired for electricity. Telephones connect Land's End with John O'Groats, and over 13,000 public call boxes have been put up in rural areas. The young people working in the towns acquire the townsman's outlook and his standards of life. They demand new houses and modern comforts. A white tiled bathroom with running water instead of the garden well. Community halls are also being built to attract social activities back to the village. The community hall is the modern equivalent of the 14th and 15th century guild hall, which were the headquarters of the old craftsmen's guild and used to serve variously for courtrooms, schoolhouses and meeting places on important occasions. The English village is traditionally built round a central patch of grassland, the village green. This is where village life is seen at its best. The butcher and the baker and so on all have their shops on the fringe of the green. Competing with the express delivery services from the town, they have to be much more efficient and alive to progress than their forefathers were. The village curio shop may represent a modern trade, but the collection of antiques in the window will remind the traveler of how long a history and how many generations of men have shared in creating the village scene before his eyes. Perhaps there are the old stocks, a very popular form of punishment in the old days. The children nowadays have much more to live for. It's 60 years since compulsory education took away from village parents the responsibility of deciding whether schooling was good for their children or not. It's more than 30 years since county councils were empowered by law to provide free education right through from the village school to the university. All the world now lies before the boy or girl who crosses the threshold of the little local school. Meanwhile, in the public house, familiarly and affectionately called the pub by all classes of Englishmen, these sweeping changes in village life have been gravely debated by the oldest inhabitants who have haunted the porch and bar parlour year in and year out and exchanged their ripe social wisdom. The pub is the one great village institution which has never declined in popularity. And there is something about a pint of English bitter and a pipeful of tobacco which encourages a man to air his opinions upon the problems of the day. The older villagers have lived through these great social changes and argued out every stage of the process. Would the buses keep people awake at night? 
Would the telephone poles ruin the view? Today, the argument is about some of the old cottages which the county council have condemned as being beyond repair. What do you think about them tearing these old houses down? I don't like it at all, Fred. No, you're se I'm 73, you're 76. They have all the suited out all right. And if they pull them down, they'll never build some more up to suit the old pockets. No, they won't. So therefore, if we got in them, we should never pay the rent. The house that I live in is 400 year old. I pay the square three shows a week and it suits me all right. I got a radio and a gramophone and uh, I haven't got a bath, but I got a river down at the bottom of the garden so I can have a good bath there when I want one. <laughs> a week frightened cows over the parson's field and the night my father only got ten shillings to keep five of them. In the old days the squire was the fountainhead of authority in the village. He enforced the law, patronized education and probably purchased himself a seat in parliament. The villagers were completely dependent on the squire for their livelihood. But today the youth of the village looks for work in the big industrial town. The landed estates, too, are slowly disappearing. Some have been sold to farmers, some have been used for building purposes, and some have become national property. The squire often lends his grounds for the village show or fete, an annual affair in most villages since the 15th century. been the landmark of an English village. There are over 12,000 ancient churches in England, more than in any other country of the world. In them can be traced the deeper character of English village life, the piety which inspired them, the loving industry which built them strong and beautiful, the genius of craftsmanship which went into every detail of carving and sculpture. Once a year, the villagers decorate the church for the harvest festival. finish their work, they go to the pub to discuss the day's events over a pint of beer and a game of darts or shopping. Yeah. 
Of course, things have changed in the village since you were here, you know. But after all, sitting down the village life isn't too bad for us. No, now I'm back to the old village again. I'd like to live another 73 years. I'd like to see you do it too. 